Let's look at some different workflow schemas. I'll take a look at batch types. And I'll click on the workflow tab and we can see this default simple schema. I can switch this from simple to advanced. And now I've got new capabilities. Here I can configure complex workflow schemas. I can edit base stages and I can also create custom stages. And all stages except scanning and processed are optional. So for instance, I can turn on export confirmation and I can turn on data verification and I can move things up and down as needed using these tools right here. I'll open the data verification stage and here we can limit how many documents are allowed for each task and we can also restrict which document definitions are available for processing. On the field set tab we can select which fields we want to enter this stage. So we can go from all fields to selected fields and then choose which fields we want here. On the entry conditions tab we can specify under what conditions documents actually flow in here. Documents are sent to the stage only if they satisfy the stage enter conditions. These con enter conditions can be modified or new conditions can be added. For instance, I can add a rule based on a condition being satisfied. Maybe a field value must satisfy a certain expression and I can select a field, maybe um, a numeric field such as opening balance is more or equal to some number. On the exit routes tab, a custom route can be specified and also the ability to allow an operator to send tasks to rescanning can be enabled or disabled. Exit routes define the next stage of processing. So you can leave the normal routing schema or you can specify a custom schema or a custom routing event where you are going to something other than the normal routing schema path. You can also do conditional routing. So if the conditions that you set here are met, then uh, the document will go to that specific specified stage. Enter conditions and exit route rules can be defined using the GUI interface as I just showed or defined by scripts. So here the script is used to determine whether the document can be routed to a certain stage. And if some error occurs during this execution, the document will be routed to the exception stage. On the roles tab, new roles can be added. And a new role can be enabled or disabled for different processing stages. And also keep in mind that we can create new processing stages intended for some particular project. And the intention generally is to ease the verification task and here you can remove unused buttons and toolbars, add buttons, and so forth. Besides the standard operator roles available in the system, you can create your own custom roles. So I've just gone to Project Properties and there's a User Roles tab. And I can create a new user role. And again, this can help me control the operator's access to data and queues in the processing stages. For example, if a large number of users are involved in a project, you can create custom roles allowing different groups of users to access different verification stages where different sets of fields are verified. You can also use custom roles to control what operators can and cannot do. For example, you can prohibit a role from deleting documents or from sending documents from one processing stage to another. 
So in setting up a role, you can specify what operators can do with batches and documents, what operators can do with tasks, and select stages from which an operator can get tasks for a particular batch type. And we can see an interface for that right here. Stages for getting tasks. And you can allow or not allow certain operations just by clicking checkboxes. Now let's return to the workflow tab of the project properties and we'll switch to the advanced schema and then we'll open up the data verification stage and we'll look at the exit routes tab. So we can configure these kinds of settings both at the project level and at the batch type level. You can see that they're identical interfaces. Let's see how we can create a custom automatic stage. So I'll click Add Stage. And if we wanted to make an interactive custom stage, say based on verification, we'd be here. But if we wanted to do an automatic stage for scripting, we highlight Automatic. And you can see that we can limit the number of documents per task, restrict document definitions, and so on. But also, we've got the Script tab where you can write script in any of our standard languages. And when that workflow script is complete, you can move it wherever you need to in your workflow. So if I want this to happen right before verification or right before export, I can move the script accordingly. Using a similar process, you can create a custom interactive stage. So perhaps I want to create a new custom verification stage. And as usual, I can limit the number of documents allowed per task. And I can restrict which document definitions can be used in this custom stage. And define entry and exit routes and create roles as needed. So perhaps I'll call this queue the Peter queue. And perhaps we'll route only high value, say invoices, by finding a total field and saying that that total field has to be above some certain threshold value. Let's talk next about stage tools. And to get a feel for capabilities, let's just go ahead and click the Add button and I can call this custom verification stage and then select the verification type and now I can add an event and here are a number of events we can link this to and then add some script accordingly to whatever our needs are. We can also edit the skin. And skin settings allow customization of the station interface for a, the current state. On the toolbars tab of this dialog box, we can configure the set of toolbars for a selected tool. And we can add a new toolbar by clicking the Add button. I'll just keep the name Custom 1. And then on the Commands tab for Toolbar Custom 1, we can add commands as needed. And if we're adding our own custom command, we can apply an icon and give it the name that we want and a tooltip. The best way to get acclimated to all the power of stage tools, I think, is to walk through this lesson's task so you get some first-hand experience using these dialog boxes to get some really powerful work done.